Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem capacity to ship packages within D days. So we're given an array of weights, for example, something like this, one, two, three, four, five. Starting at the beginning of the array, we want to break it up into chunks such that carried by a ship. The ship will have some capacity so we have to make sure that the ship can hold all of these weights, and then we'll have another ship maybe for this set of weights. Our goal here though is to choose a capacity. We are the ones choosing the capacity of the ships. And our job is to choose a capacity for the ships such that it is the minimal capacity that we need to carry all of these weights given this many ships. Now you might notice that the context of this problem, they're talking about the number of days that it's gonna take us, not the number of ships. But I think thinking about it in terms of the number of ships makes a lot more sense because it's equivalent to this problem. And I think they're probably just trying to make it more confusing by making it number of days. So let's think about it in terms of number of ships. So for example, if the number of days, AKA the number of ships is equal to two, that means we have to load all of these weights onto the two ships and we have to choose the minimum capacity of our ships. Each ship will have the exact same capacity, but we have to choose this value. Maybe let's try choosing one for the capacity. So when now when we break up the array, we have to start at the beginning and create contiguous chunks. Our first chunk is just gonna be one. That's gonna fit on the ship. And then we have a second chunk that's two. Well, that's not gonna fit on the ship. So it's not even possible to do this with ships with a capacity of one. This is the first observation that I made when I was solving this problem. That at the very least, the minimal possible capacity that we have to choose will be the max value in the input array. In this case, it's five. So that's the lowest capacity we should even try going with. So let's now change this to five. But even knowing this, but even knowing this, how do we make sure we minimize the solution? With a capacity of five, we could do this subarray, it has a sum of three. We could then do this subarray in another separate ship that has a sum of three. We can't include both of these together because that's a sum of seven. We can't fit those in a single ship. But you can see we're already running out of ships. We have two ships and we'll need a third one for this and a fourth one for this. That's not gonna work. So now what should we do? We tried five, that's not the minimal answer, it doesn't work. So then maybe let's try six. That won't work either, but the only way we'll know is if we go through the entire array. We can load these three on a single ship, this on a single ship, and this on a single ship. That's three ships, but we can only have two ships. So this is a brute force approach, but you can tell it's gonna be N squared. Is there any other observation you can make? Well, we know we're gonna need at least this much capacity. Is there an upper bound for the capacity as well? Well, for sure, at the very least, we know the highest possible capacity we would want to choose would never be higher than the total sum of all of these weights. Because why would we do that when we're trying to minimize the capacity? We don't need a ship with more than this much capacity. And if we have multiple ships, we'll probably need less than that. But this is still a good upper bound, the sum of the input array. So in the context of this problem, for our capacity, we know that the lower bound is going to be five, that's the maximum value in the input, and the upper bound is gonna be the sum of the input array, which in this case is 15. So this is our search space. We know our solution is somewhere in here. So we can try the brute force approach going through each of these but an even better approach would be to run binary search on this search space. Now that we have decomposed it into a binary search problem, that is going to be the most optimal solution. And if you're wondering how I was able to figure it out, well, as soon as I noticed that the capacity had a lower bound, the next question I asked myself is, does it also have an upper bound? And the answer was yes, as I just explained. And as soon as I knew that, I knew this was similar to another leak code problem that I had solved, leak code 875, 
and this problem is nearly identical. So it's all about pattern matching. I have a video on this problem as well if you're curious, it's Coco eating bananas. But now let's simulate a binary search on this. So I'm gonna initialize our left bound as being five, just like down here, and our right bound is gonna be 15 for our binary search. We're gonna take these two, add them together, and divide by two. That's gonna lead us to a mid of 10. It's not a traditional binary search like we do like on here, like left and right, but we're gonna be searching this, so it's a bit different. But with a mid value of 10, what does this 10 represent? It represents the capacity of the ship. We have two ships at most, so let's try this, a ship of 10 capacity. We can fit this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. I would know that by summing all of them up and they sum up to 10. We can't fit the five though, but now we can add it to its own ship. So with a capacity of 10, it does work, but we're trying to minimize the capacity. So let's try again with a smaller value. So what I'm gonna do now is set the result equal to 10. That's the minimum so far, but I'm now gonna try to lower my search space to find maybe an even smaller value. So I'm gonna change the right pointer now to M minus one, that's 10 minus one, which is nine. So now let's try adding these two, dividing by two, that's gonna give us a mid of seven. So a capacity of seven. Can we fit all of these with two ships with a capacity of seven? We can fit this, 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 and we can't fit the four, but we can add it to its own ship, but with a capacity of seven, we can't add both of these. So seven does not work. Our result is going to stay nine. But now we actually want to increase our search space. So we're gonna set left equal to mid plus one. It was seven, so we're gonna set it to seven plus one, which is eight. And at this point, I'm just gonna fast forward and tell you if we try eight, it's not gonna work. We're gonna get this and this and this in its own ship. But if we try nine, we're gonna get these three in its own ship and this in its own ship. That does satisfy the requirement. We only needed two ships. And this happens to be the minimal capacity that we needed among all of them that we tried. So that's the solution. Now, in terms of time complexity, it's going to be N because for every capacity we try, we have to, in the worst case, iterate through the entire array. So that's where the N comes from. Now multiply that by the binary search. At first you might think it's log N, but what we would log is the size of our search space. What is gonna be the size of the search space in the worst case? Well, the lower bound maybe might be zero or something like that. But the upper bound is where the time complexity is gonna come from because it's gonna be the sum of the input array. So let's just say M is the sum of the input array. Now it turns out that M is not gonna be like a huge number because each individual weight is capped at being less than or equal to 500. So this is a pretty efficient solution, about as good as we can get. So now let's code it up. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do with this pretty non-traditional binary search is to initialize our range. We know that the lower bound for the ship capacity we're gonna need is gonna be the maximum of the weights and the upper bound is going to be the sum of all of the weights. And we're gonna initialize our result since we're trying to minimize it, initializing it to zero wouldn't be great. So we're gonna initialize it to the maximum of our search space equal to R, but ultimately we're gonna try to minimize it. So now to move on to the actual binary search, this is how I like to code it up because you can pretty much do it almost the same way every time. I usually set left less than or equal to the right pointer. Then I compute the mid. So the simplest way to do it is left plus right divided by two, though sometimes this can give overflow. But then we wanna know, does this M, which is the capacity, maybe I should rename it cap, can this ship all of the weights? Given this capacity, can we ship all of the weights? If true, and I'm gonna define this helper function in just a minute, but if it's true, then we're gonna do something, otherwise we're gonna do something else. If we can ship it, maybe this is a new minimal result. So we're gonna set the result equal to the minimum of itself and the capacity that we just computed. And we're going to update our range. We want to now try to find an even smaller capacity. So we're gonna set our right pointer to M minus one. In the other case, we would want to increase our range because we're trying to find a, a higher value. So we're gonna set left 
equal to mid plus one. After this binary search is over, we know result will have the minimum capacity. So we're just going to return that. Now, the only thing left to do is our helper function, which we know is just going to be a loop. We're going to loop through the entire input array. So can ship given some capacity. So we're going to go through every weight in the input weights. What we're trying to do, though, is count the number of ships it's going to take us. I'm going to initialize that to one because we know we're going to need at least one ship. And I'm going to set the current capacity of that ship equal to the capacity that was passed in as a parameter. So now I'm going to go through every weight and we're going to subtract from the capacity, the current capacity, the weight that we're adding to the ship. But it's possible that the current capacity can't hold the weight, meaning the current capacity subtracted by W is going to go negative. That means the current capacity can't hold the weight. So then what we're going to do is increment the number of ships. That means we need another ship. Let's increment that by one and then reset the current capacity equal to the original capacity. This is a fresh ship, therefore it should get a fresh capacity. And then we will subtract from the current capacity. Now, if we execute this if statement, this is never gonna make the capacity go negative because remember our search space was initialized like that deliberately. We took the maximum weight. So no matter how big an individual weight is, it's never gonna make this go negative if it's a fresh capacity. After all of this is done, we're going to return the result. The result is can we ship or not? And we know that if we take the number of ships that we computed is less than or equal to the number of days that was given as a parameter, which, you know, I've pretty much ignored the context of the number of days. This should just be the number of ships, but oh well. That's the entire code though. And of course I called these M instead of cap because that's what we were doing in the drawing explanation. So let me fix that and rerun it. As you can see, it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.